thanks to the following businesses that have jumped on board with us to support our travels plus give you guys out there some cracker discounts. Right guys, so we've moved on from Mason's Bay and we've come to probably the spot we've been wanting to come for a while, that not one of our highlights of the trip. And this is one of the spots you have to book in advance. So we had this one booked probably you know, a couple of months ago and looking, well you probably had to tell from the background where we are, we are in Esperance National Park at Cape Le Grand. Yes, it's very grand, um, minus all the seaweed that's on the beach, unfortunately. Yes. Or should I say the highway to Esperance? Yeah, so obviously if you've been following us, you know the last week or so we've been following the storms all the way down the bottom coast. We've had a lot of rain and winds and that, but uh, unfortunately it's brought nothing but seaweed along the beach and all in the water. So it doesn't look as good as we were hoping it's going to be, but still, still pretty bloody good, isn't it? It is, it is, yeah. So we went for a bit of a drive around yesterday. Uh, we move on to Lucky Bay uh, in a few more nights. Uh, down there is just like, oh my God. Yeah. Paying to get the boat off, to be able to actually go out into that water, yeah. um, to hopefully catch some good fish. Yeah. But down there, it's a little bit different a bit of seaweed in the nook end of the island um, down there but on the bay of the beach it's just absolutely beautiful yeah, it's um, definitely up for its name isn't it it's just that white beaches the blue water not as much seaweed there at lucky bay compared to here at cape Grand, but yeah hanging to get the boat off i've been current for the last month or so <laughs> wanting to get in the water but all the, every place we've been to has been raining or windy or rough conditions so their forecast good conditions for the next few, da few days in Esperance and hopefully next week when we get to Lucky Bay it's just as good so. Yeah and we're hanging to go and do the uh, ocean drive, the big ocean drive here in Esperance. That's it. So we're here for a couple of weeks. Um, yeah hopefully we'll take you to some pretty cool spots and get some magical weather. That's it so we had to put this one online didn't you through the parks of wildlife wasn't it? Yes it's $15 a night per adult and $3 per child. Three hours a child there you go. So it's not too bad so what's that 33 bucks a night? Yeah yeah no pretty good. Uh, and the Grand here they've got uh, flushing toilets, they've got solar hot water showers yeah, yeah. so you've got to be getting in quick for a shower. Camp um, kitchen, big sites too like so most of the sites here at Cape Le Grand are quite big, uh, a couple of smaller ones there, but it's a first in best dressed type scenario, so luckily we're enough we, were to get, we got to get in here about, what, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, and we've got a decent site, so. Yeah, we've got an awesome site. We're up in the secluded end loop yes. at Le Grand. Um, yeah, obviously we've got a little bit of ocean view, but it was sort of tucked away nicely and hardly any traffic goes past. That's it. One thing you hear at uh, Cape Le Grand, you can also drive along the beaches here. 
So apparently you can drive all the way from Cape Legrand all the way back to the Boat Harbour, which is just before Esperance. It's, it takes about 15, 16 k's off the trip. So when you sort of look at the ground here, it's all compacted. It's like a bitumen highway. And uh, tell you what, the last few days we've just seen car after car just flying along the tracks here and enjoying it all out there. They're just... Um, yeah, we definitely plan to do it. Yeah, we've got... um, we're just holding off because we don't need to do a shop yet. But when we do, we'll definitely take you along with us. Yeah. We'll show you spots along the way. And that's it. So we're hopefully going to go into town and get some more food, water, alcohol, bits and pieces, just to get yeah. us going through Lucky Bay. So I think they're forecasting a crappy day next few days. So we'll head into town then and get our supplies. But in the meantime, we're going to enjoy this view. And I tell you what, it's uh, definitely named up to its name. And check this out for serenity. It's just Hills. Don't you mean it lives up to its name, babe? Well, do you want to call it that? <laughs> but look at that. Islands in the background. There's so many of them. If you're a beach lover, you'll definitely love it here. Oh. You just got to pick the right time of the year to get the bathers on. That's it, definitely, yeah. That's a problem with down the southwest. It's uh, even in the summertime, you don't get too many warm days. But I'm saying that the water temperature is not too bad, but. Yeah, look at that. It's awesome. And then in the background there, we've got the Frenchman's Peak, which we plan on. One with a uh, bit of a point, the cap at the end there. We're planning on climbing that in the next few days, so we'll take you along for that as well. But yeah, loving it. So this is Camp the Ground uh, Campground. Just a little bit of information. Obviously, the campgrounds are pretty much booked out all year round. You've got to book it in advance, that's for sure. Especially on peak times. It's <laughs> well, this one only been 14 sites as well, so it's a lot smaller than... Uh, Lucky, Lucky Bay, Bay. It was about 53 sites, so... But, uh, so we're here, site 14. So, at the end here, we've got our own little toilet block. And there is some a tap there for showering and washing up type water. Not drinkable, obviously. Uh, Campground was a, the um, camp kitchen. Camp kitchen, we've got barbecue in there, um, a sink. Obviously, uh, they've got bins and everything here as well. Yeah, and they've got the gas, a gas burner inside the camp kitchen as well. Yeah, uh, good amenities. For yeah. 33 bucks, it's um, pretty good value. And right, and you're right on the beach too, so. Exactly, and it's very, very clean as well. Yeah, so this is the entrance here to. Cape of Grands, little gates, and then just drive through. So just quickly here for the fees at Cape of Grand or any national park really in WA, it's uh, normally 15 bucks per vehicle per day, um, or we, what we highly recommend is to get the annual pass, which is 120. And uh, a bit of a tip for you guys, if you are an REC member, it's half price, it's only 60 bucks. So if you're planning on doing a uh, bit of trips around WA, all the national parks, yearly passes to go 120 or 60 bucks and it gets you into all the parks in WA. So here we have the male and female separated showers and toilets. So in each cubicle, I don't know about yours, Cam, but we've got two showers in ours and three toilets. Pretty much the same, yep. They're all flushable toilets, all operating on solar. Hot water, but uh, what's the best time to get in there is before five o'clock, isn't it? Because after five, it uh, starts to get well, probably Get earlier if there's not as much sun, it'll be beautiful in there today. Yeah, but, uh, these are some of the size of the sites you'd see. That's a, a pretty small site. This one's a bit bigger. A bit bigger. Obviously, some are varying in size, but most of them are pretty big. A bit different than uh, down at uh, Lucky Bay. We only have one set of camp posts here. Whereas Lucky Bay, they have two for each different loop. Um, Lucky so Bay has so two different numbers, loops. Yeah, so there's 53 campsites to look after, so I've divided into two, and one camp has to look after 20, another one looks about 25, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there's little tracks taken off everywhere. You can walk down to the beach. And you'll always come across kangaroos. Kangaroos, wildlife, and they and reckon little snakes. Snake. There you go, <laughs> little tigery. He's uh, not little, he's... Decent size, actually. There he, he goes. I thought he was a bit of tire then. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Look out. She did say little snakes were around, but that, that was, was a, a bit little, little one. Than, that's right. <laughs> that was a big one. 
But yeah, there's a Site 10, that's quite a big one too. There's a little camp kitchen just here. There's a camp kitchen. So there's rubbish bins everywhere. It's scattered all over the park. Like I say, there's quite a few taps around the joint where you can get some portable water for just washing up. They say you can drink it if you boil it, but uh, it's only up to you what you want to do there. Bring some drinking water, obviously, or drink more beer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, running sink, hot and cold. Some gas hot plates. And look at that nice, clean barbecue. But yeah, keep it clean after you use it. A nice protected area. Yeah, so the day when it was windy we ducked ourselves in here and had a couple of drinks and she was quite protected, wasn't it? Yeah, it's was beautiful. Been stone through from outside, perfect. That's it. So there you go. There's only one camp kitchen here, so that's the... Also there's only 14 sites. Yeah, it works out perfectly. Nice and quiet too about Cape the Grand, I think. Lucky Bay will be very much different. They say that operates more like a caravan park. Yeah. So personally, the... I think we prefer the quiet one. Yeah. But, um, you've got to go try both of them out. That's right. So this is the walk this way. This is the end loop here. Oh, we'll probably just go this way, but that's the end loop. Okay. There's one site at the end of that loop, and then another one across from us. That's it. Much. So if you come up this way, this is where our camp is. This is site 14. And as you know, we're quite a big setup and it was quite easy to come into. So we just came in this way and back to straight in pretty much. And here we are. Sit up there. As I say, just to the left here, we have our own little toilet block. There's a tap here as well. But it's just nice and quiet because not many people are driving past much and we have our own little space. And uh, this one's quite a decent size as well, so we're tucked to that side, awning out, still a bit of room, and uh, enough room to park your car and protect ourselves. A bit of privacy. So I thought we'd quickly just take you down to the end of the loop here and just show you the last couple of sites, then you've seen pretty much the whole whole park here, or camp, whole campground I should say. This is a site 13, a bit smaller site but pretty easy to get into, or you can just drive in this way and back straight in. And you come around here to site 12 and this would probably have to be the biggest site in the whole campground so if you're a big setup and you want plenty of room or you want to maybe you can even fit two camps here site 12 is definitely the go so obviously you just drive in from that way and look at that huge big site and you get your own little path here that heads down to the beach what you got at your doorstep so each morning me walking down here with my coffee and just chilling out and checking these views out
we've come down to Hellfire Bay to have a little bit of a fish today. Check out this blue water. It's the best, this blue water I've probably ever seen on the southwest coast to date so far. already supposed to be catching fish not each other to check the sand out it's weird you walk on it and it wiggles in between your toes <laughs> it's the most weirdest feeling it's got the most purest whitest sand hell five a see why people fall in love with this estuary's water and this is on a rough day so I've just come from a walk uh, at, from the entrance of Hellfire Bay and found another freshwater running stream down the ocean far out this is incredible pretty constant stream of fresh water Need access for the van. We'll be in heaven for days on end, I think. I'll take you right up to the end to uh, show you where it's all coming from. But the entrance to Hellfire Bay is all the way up there. And obviously I've just taken a little bit of a stroll while the boys are fishing, all the way to the other side. So the freshwater stream is right down the other side of the entry point. It starts to get a bit yucky up here. It's not well, it's nice up here. The cuttlefish. So many cuttlefish down here down south. They must be everywhere out there in the ocean. All the seaweed I think has ruined it a little bit. through all this yucky bit. Oh, little crab. I think he's dead. Poor bugger. And it starts to get a little bit better up here. Let's get up a little bit further where it's a little bit more fresher. And I'll give it a taste to see what it's all about. And how it tastes. So I've just about reached the end where it's coming from. Yeah, there it is. Oh, that is so fresh. Mm. Absolutely beautiful. Fresh rainwater. So peaceful and still. I love finding little spots like this. Take yourself a little walk and there you go. These are the things you find. Would have never known if I stood up the other end of the beach and didn't come down and have a look.
my lunch can. In the ocean. You've got something here. Is this just bait? Or are we gonna... for, for bait for the bigger ones for next time. <laughs> Look at this one. So this is the other side of Hellfire Bay. You can obviously climb a big rock and have a look over the other side. And boy gee, she uh, drops right off. The swell started to pick up since we've got here. But yesterday, the swell was right up over these rocks. Still beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, but um, I reckon this would be a ripper of a fishing spot. But you sort of got to be game to want to come up here because when the swell changes, it changes. And as you can see, it's a little bit swelly, but it's not too bad at the moment. They've actually got anchors up here, rock anchors. So when you want to go fishing and whatever, you can secure yourself a little bit more better to the rock. I'm going to be able to take you because <laughs> I'm certainly not going in there swimming. But just around the corner, if you can see, that's Little Hellfire Bay. It is beautiful, beautiful. I could probably walk up around the top and show you. Let's have a look. So I've managed to get a little bit further to show you guys just how much little beach is just pure heaven and then you've got this <laughs> deep water ocean so as I was talking about before how it really drops off on this side and uh, being able to anchor yourself down with rock anchors this is what I was talking about. So you basically put a harness on yourself before you start to fish. Secure yourself so if anything does turn pear shape over here, which you can sort of see the potential for it to do this you know, on a bad day. Sort of a bit of safety first. Fish. <laughs> he loves catching crabs. So this is what he's gonna do. Catching no fish, so bugger it he reckons he's gonna catch some crabs instead. Anything to do with crabs. 
He loves catching them. Entertainment for years and years at the beach. Never gets bored. Right, so we decided to go for a bit of a walk this morning. We're going up the coastal trail from La Grande to Hellfire Beach. So just to the car park there at La Grande, there's a little set of steps. Just head up there and you'll start heading up the mountain and this is the sort of views that you'll get. We're only halfway at the moment, but obviously you can see Frenchman's Peak over there. The range in the background. There's the campground down there. And you get the view of all that beach down there. Minus the seaweed, unfortunately, but can't be helped but yeah this is sort of the, the trail along here sort of a little goat track on the side of the mountain at the start there were steps yeah so we'll keep heading along head to hellfire Yeah, so the coastal trail here is pretty wicked, eh? It's definitely worth doing. It's um, not too bad at all. It's sort of half in the mountains, half sort of pathway, you could, goat track you could call it. It's uh, not challenging at all. You could probably do it with a couple of young kids. But uh, the views around here are just so incredible, eh? Like, here a couple of mountains in here, a couple of caves in it. And we're going back around to the Frenchman's Peak or Frenchman Point. And then back around to Cape Lower Grand Beach. Near sort of the path here, sort of half on a mountain. But yeah, it's pretty cool, I reckon. Something different. is a spectacular walk trail in the Cape Le Grand National Park that extends from Le Grand Beach to Rossiter Bay via Hellfire Bay. But without even doing our homework first as to how far it was to Hellfire Bay, we stopped to check out our phones to find out it was a three hour walk one way. Um, Chris has started to hang back in the van for this one, so not wanting to be bad parents, we decided after about half an hour to turn around and leave this trail for another day when we return to Le Grand to explore some more. So when you arrive here at Cape Le Grand, this is a car park for day uses. Uh, the campground's just to the left there. Or you can head down to the entrance of the beach here and you can drive all the way to Wiley Bay. So it's 22 k's by the beach. It does take a bit of time off by going out the longer way on the highway. Uh, but obviously just the air conditions, so just check before you go if it's high tide and things like that. So yeah, you just have that view all the way along pristine beaches and you know we've driven it already and most of it is pretty hard uh, there is some sections that are a bit, bit soft so I just recommend you let your tyres down a little bit but uh, otherwise it's like driving on a bitumen 
Look at that. So I thought I'd quickly just show you guys how easy these Max Tracks in deflators are. Um, we use them all the time, so pretty much these bigger tyres, they maybe take a bit longer to deflate, so we just normally plug them in. Plug them in each side. And then that'll equalise itself now onto the gauge. Normally you let it sit for about a minute and it'll equalise. And then just open it up. Start deflating. Just keep checking it every now and then. That's pretty much it. So when you want to fill them back up, you see just to put your airline hose onto here and you'll go reverse so it'll start filling it back up and equalize. So today we've decided to take what's called uh, the beach drive from La Grande to Wiley Bay. Uh, it saves about 15 kilometers, doesn't it Cam? Yeah, something like that roughly. So let's go on the bitumen and get through all these pristine beaches on the way through. It's just absolutely beautiful Caught behind Venetian blinds Had to reach for the city lines and This ain't where I belong Ain't looking me more what I become I've been running east, looking for something, digging deep since '99. What I thought was gone was sitting in my pocket in plain sight all along. I think it's time for me to go.
seen this awesome rainbow. Look at it. We're back at camp. Everyone's getting shots of rainbows. I just joined in. <laughs> Have we camp? Saving the toilet rolls. They got wet when, uh, unfortunately, the tap came on in the kitchen. And while we've been out today, we left him out to dry. <laughs> 